If you continue along the liquid vapor phase boundary up to about 374 degrees Celsius and 217 atmospheres of pressure, you enter a new region, which is prefaced by something labeled the critical point. And at this point, water becomes a special phase of matter known as a supercritical fluid. And a supercritical fluid is a particularly interesting phase of matter that appears to have the properties of both a liquid and a gas. Supercritical fluids are not always recognized as a separate phase of matter, but many molecular compounds can form a supercritical fluid. Water and CO2, carbon dioxide, are good examples of this. And supercritical fluids are interesting forms of matter with a lot of applications. They appear to be constantly, they look like constantly boiling liquids that never really enter the gas phase. And they can be put to a number of different industrial applications like cleaning or extracting specific chemical compounds. They can be used to decaffeinate coffee, among other things. And they're very interesting phases of matter. So a supercritical fluid is neither a true liquid nor a true gas. And if you push the temperature and pressure beyond the supercritical fluid region, so for instance, if your water is at 374 degrees Celsius and 218 atmospheres of pressure, and you keep pushing to higher pressures and higher temperatures, once you enter that supercritical fluid phase and continue through that phase, no further visible changes occur beyond that point. So once it forms a supercritical fluid, you can continue to increase the pressure and the temperature, and it's not necessarily going to enter any other phase of matter. Once it becomes a supercritical fluid, as long as you maintain at least that pressure and temperature, or another way of saying that is once you move beyond the critical point on the phase diagram, it remains a supercritical fluid. And so we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, industrial and real world significance of supercritical fluids in chapter 11. But I have linked in particular a video, a YouTube video, of how you can make supercritical carbon dioxide in a specially made high pressure device so that you can see an example of a supercritical fluid. And we'll talk more about what we can use supercritical fluids for in chapter 11. So this is it for phase diagrams. I have a few recommended practice problems to follow this lecture up um, at the end of this module. But tomorrow, Wednesday, we're moving on to talk about the structure of crystalline solids. And so we won't circle back to talk more about supercritical fluids for a while. If you have any questions about phase diagrams, be sure to run them past me. Phase diagrams will be covered on exam number two.